In this video, I want to explain some of the basics of building a load balanced web farm using IIS 7. Now, my intent with this isn't to really give you a step by step guide, but more of a high level overview of how to build this using what components and what parts and, and, and how to build the whole thing as a whole. Um, so, without further ado, let's get started. The server setup I'm going to be using for this video is a Dell PowerEdge 2950 Generation 2. You can see here that the uh, server is decently specced. It's good for virtualization. Uh, it's got two Xeon quad cores, so we got eight cores at 2 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, six 73 gig hard drives on RAID 5, uh, Dell Perk 5i RAID card, four gigabit network connections, and it's running VMware ESXi 5.1, and that's installed on an eight gigabyte thumb drive. And uh, we're going to be running six servers in virtual machines on top of ESXi here. And um, there is a separate domain controller that's hosted on another ESXi server. And uh, that'll be used for the uh, login accounts. And it's also going to be used for the DFSR replication, which it is required for. Because this is a test, it's okay that we're running all these virtual machines in the farm on one physical server. But obviously in the real world, you wouldn't want to do that in a production environment. So here we see our traffic flow and overview of all of the servers in our farm. So we see off to the left here that we have a pair of ARR, or Application Request Routing Servers, and that they're arranged in a Network Load Balance, or NLB, configuration. Basically what we're doing here is load balancing the load balancers. Now this is not similar to a cluster. If you had a cluster, you have two servers, but they're not working in real time. You one server works and when that server goes down the other one fails over or takes over typically is how that works what we're doing here is we're using network load balancing and we want both of the servers to be able to answer the request and distribute them distribute them amongst themselves so what we do is we use network load balancing and you tie the servers together with what with what's called a virtual or VIP so they will share an IP now each server does have its own individual IP but they will share the central IP and this is the IP that your requests are going to come in on so as long as the request comes in on the VIP either one of these servers could go down and the request would still be fulfilled when a request comes in on the load balance IP address, it is then forwarded to one of the servers, the ARR servers, in the NLB configuration. ARR is an application that is installed on top of IIS that is used to load balance to a farm. The reason why we do this is because ARR is an application level aware load balancer. So say if uh, one of the web servers re is returning like uh, 500 errors, it'll know that it's doing that and it'll quit sending requests to that server. Whereas NLB will keep sending it to the server because it's as long as it can reach the server, it'll keep sending requests there. So our request comes in, it hits the ARR portion of IIS. In ARR, you add your web servers to your farms and groups inside there. And then you use URL rewrite to forward the request to those web servers. So the request comes in, hits ARR, and then hits the web farm and looks and see if there's a server that has the content that it needs and forwards it to that web server. And then the response comes back. So our ARR servers are pretty much plain Jane um, IIS 7 installs, along with the addition of ARR and URL rewrite. And then we also have uh, file services on there with DFSR for the replication of the, uh, the shared configurations for IIS to keep our servers in sync, to keep the configurations the same. And then you also have the uh, NLB installed on those. So you he see here that we have uh, two web servers in this setup. So those two web servers will be added to the farm that is located on our ARR servers, and that's how it knows the web servers that are in our pool. We can then add or remove additional servers as needed. It's pretty much easy at that point. Our uh, web servers are just going to be um, IIS 7 installs, and uh, they'll have PHP and that kind of stuff on the ASP. Um, other than that, oh, um, file services, because we're going to use DFSR to uh, sync the uh, web configurations or the server configurations for IIS, we'll be using the shared configuration. And um, we're also going to use DFSR to sync the uh, web content folders. And for our backend or database servers, we'll have two servers running MySQL. Uh, I believe the version it, I'm going to be using in this video is 5.5.6. Five, five, and uh, they're going to be set up in a master-slave setup. 
So basically all of our writes and reads are going to go to one server and then it's going to replicate to another server for a backup and um, should one fail we can then manually switch over to the other server. So uh, that's our basic traffic flow pattern. We have a request comes in on the load balance IP, hits the ARR servers, it, the request is then sent to the web server, and uh, it hits the database server if it has to, comes back, forwards the request back to the ARR server, and then it's sent back to the uh, end client or user, and uh, the, the process is complete. So at any time now, we could have to we could have up to three servers go down and have minimal service disruption. I mean, for the ARR and the web servers, one of them going down, it's pretty much an instantaneous switchover. Um, the database server is a little bit different. Like I said, they'd have to be manually switched over. But um, there are other ways of doing those too that you could have pretty much the same. But uh, um, f that's a little more complicated setup for MySQL, and I uh, can be a little bit error prone from what I understand. This is just kind of a quick list of the uh, server configurations for each server in this setup. And it's the same thing, there's just two for each one of these. Um, so you see for our ARR servers, um, it's just a Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition is what I'm using. And it's got IIS 7 installed, ARR in the UR rewrite module, um, network load balancing which is a feature. And then we have file services in the DFSR which is under roles. Um, for the web servers, they're going to be the same thing, Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition, uh, and it has IIS installed and PHP, and I think I actually have uh, ASP installed now too, and uh, we're also going to install file services DFSR on there too. Now on both of these ARR and the web server setups, the reason why we install the DFSR is to keep those uh, the contents synced in the uh, the IIS configurations, and uh, for the web servers, we're actually going to use that to sync the uh, the web content too. And then we have two database servers, which are also running uh, Windows Server 2008 uh, R2 Enterprise Edition, and they're running uh, MySQL using a master slave replication configuration. So now that we've seen everything that helps put it all together, let's take a look at the actual servers themselves and see the settings on the servers. The first server we're going to take a look at is going to be the domain controller. So let's take a look at Active Directory. We see that all of the servers in the farm are tied to the uh, Active Directory controller. And uh, this is also a DNS server. And we check to see here that we actually have a few DNS entries made to our uh, load balanced IP and that's because we're running host headers on IIS so we need DNS entries for those to to work correctly and uh, this is a quick glimpse of my ESXi server we see that all the virtual machines running here web servers get 3 gig of RAM uh, 2 gig for the ARR servers 4 gig for my DB1 and 2 gig for my DB2 uh, and let's go and check out the uh, ARR servers. Now we have two of these, and these are the ones that are in the uh, load balance configuration. Let's go back to number one and check out some of the setup on there. Everything is going to be identical between these two. So we check out the uh, NLB manager, and we see that we have the uh, virtual IP address there, and we see the IP addresses of each of the individual servers. And you see that they're bound together and they're sharing and uh, we can easily add to the cluster or create another cluster in another virtual IP it's pretty straightforward and uh, let's go check out the IIS manager so the first thing we notice here when we expand is the server farms and that's because of the ARR install on the server we see that there are servers available and we see our 32 and 33 and they're online and we can easily add more servers or we could add another farm and you will see that there is a site. You do have to have a default site and a binding made available for the servers. And uh, we check out the URL rewrite. And this is what's going to forward the request for us. It's just a rule and that will send it on to our web form and our other servers. If we check it out, it says that uh, basically any request matching the pattern of wildcard sent to the server form. And then it will check the servers in the form that we've added. And uh, one last thing to check is the uh, shared configuration. You see that we've got it enabled here. And this is the location that we've got the configuration going to or exported to. And you see that directory here, and here's what's in that folder. 
Now we use DFS to uh, copy these folders to each each server or keep them synchronized. And basically, you just are keeping a duplicate on each server, and any changes made are instantly synchronized to the other server, and vice versa. You see that it, you can easily add new members or create more rules for replication for other files to copy in directories and keep to keep in sync. Um, it really does work great for this, and uh, the only downside is you do need a domain controller for it. And uh, that's pretty much it for the ARR controllers. Okay, next we're going to take a look at the web servers. You see that we got two of them here. And let's go back to web server number one because the configuration is going to be identical on both of them. So you see that we expand our web server here and we've got a few sites on it and uh, all the content is synced between both sites. And you see that we're using the shared configuration again so any changes we make here are instantly synced to the other server and vice versa. And again using DFSR for that and these are the directories that we're syncing. We have uh, the shared folder and then we also have our regular our www root directory and here's our DFSR rules. You see that we got two separate rules, one for the config, one for the web content but it'll basically display um, the members of the, the replication group and, and that they're syncing in what folders and everything and there we go. So you can use this to sync all of your web content. Oh, one thing to note is if you're going to be running ASP in a farm, the machine key, you want to make sure that you set these to not automatically generate. You have to make a standard key across your server farm. And it's really easy because you just make it on one machine using the shared config. It'll copy it out for you. And uh, that's pretty much it for the web servers. Okay, so now we're on to the uh, database servers. And uh, there's not really a whole lot to these. <laughs> because on the server itself you don't really do much you see that we got two of them here um, one thing to note is that you will um, edit the uh, my.ini config file if you're going to be doing like replication or doing any custom settings and stuff like that and uh, this is just kind of a you know get an idea what it looks like but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you do. You might do a little command line work on the server itself. But uh, for me, most of the time, I actually uh, manage it from a PHP my admin. And you see that uh, this is back on the uh, web server. And we're just um, accessing a local install of PHP my admin. So you see that the uh, server we pulled up there was uh, 34. And let's check the IP of this just to confirm that it is that server. Okay, so we see the IP address 34 there. So we have two separate installs of PHP MyAdmin, one for DB1, one for DB2. And you see that this is DB1, and it is in the uh, master configuration. And you see that there's the uh, slave there. And let's check out the other uh, PHP MyAdmin. Now this is the one that's connected to the slave. And you see here is our uh, slave table, the status table. And we are zero seconds behind the master, which is good. And uh, that's really all there is to the databases. Okay, so now time to test it. So we try the uh, Embraco install and loads up pretty quickly. And I'm able to type it just like that too because I made those DNS entries earlier. And I also have a uh, WordPress on the same server, so let's give that a try. I'll try that again. And there you go. So we got an ASP and a PHP application talking to a MySQL backend. And that pretty much wraps up this one. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this gave you a good idea of uh, how to get started and how to set up a IIS web form.